Hi everyone! Well, I feel like now is a good of a time as ever to do the best of 2016 video since now that I have new hair and my room is changing and I'm like really feeling myself. I feel so good. Cutting my hair like this was one of the best things that I've done in a long time. Um, it was inspired by Demi Moore from Ghost. But it, now that I'm looking at it, it's giving me a little Mia Farrow, right? Little Rosemary's baby action. All right. Oh no, the devil. Uh, so I, I feel great. I feel really good. I'm like expressing myself with my clothes more. I'm going for it. I feel fantastic. Um, I'm in the middle of finals. This is my one little break that I'm going to get before I go out of the country for a little while. Um, by the time I get back, it'll be pretty much New Year's Eve and I won't have time to really film this and get this up. So I'm going to do it now. The best of a certain year videos are really hard because I want to make sure that I give all of the attention to the beautiful products that I've been loving, I've been using, that deserve credit for really just sort of impacting me in a way that I feel significant enough to express. I'm going to limit it only to products that I had purchased this year and, and started using this year. I will try to keep brief because I have a lot of products looking at my desk right now because this was really the year where I found the idea and the concept of skincare as self-care to be completely evident in my life and I really found um, myself through sort of exploring skincare. YouTube really took off. I got to, you know, get to know more of you guys and really get to meet a lot more of you in person, which is fantastic. A lot of fantastic opportunities have come up that I'm so appreciative appreciative of and um, I like this like 10,000 is a lot of people but I also still feel like it's small enough where we can sort of create this little community to get together. So I think the best way to do these sorts of videos is to really just sort of go in order that I would do um, my skincare and that way you can really sort of see step by step what I really fell in love with. The first thing that I want to mention, so my criteria for the products in this video are a little bit stricter this year um, but even though I have more products it's really based on products that impacted me in a way that I feel needs to be mentioned. So whether I used it all year, almost every single day, or multiple times a week, or I haven't had it for a really long amount of time, but it's affected me and it's impacted my skin and it's changed the way I felt about skincare, um, then it's obviously going to get a mention. You know, some of these I've only been using for a few months, but I feel so strongly about them that they deserve to be um, given a little bit of love. All right, let's get into cleansers. Obviously, you know I'm a cleansing fiend, right? I love cleansers. I love, I think cleansing is the most important step of any skincare ritual. It's it's, it's so important to me. Tata Harbor cleansers obviously still have such a strong place in my heart, um, but I think the one that I reached for um, the most besides the purifying, which deserves an honorable mention, but it's been giving me a few skin irritations lately, so I'm trying to step away from it for a second. I'm sure I'll go back and you know, Stockholm Syndrome, but uh, the cleansing oil I've been using probably the most. It removes makeup, but I don't use it for that. It It's emulsifying, but not um, like really thin and wimpy and uh, milky. It really feels like it's conditioning the skin. It's softening it. It makes me feel super clean, but still very hydrated and softened, which most cleansing oils, that's sort of a, a challenge that some of them go through is they don't make your skin feel clean. Um, and I don't mind that. I love the feeling of oil on my skin, but some people don't love that. Um, but I love this enough to have a backup. So if that tells you anything. This was really the year of votary too. I mean, I, I didn't experience them until hmm, a couple months ago, but I fell fast and I fell hard. Uh, the cleansing oils happen to be my favorite out of the range, although I've been using the Super Seed left and right because my skin's been real mad at me from the season change and that sort of thing and stress. But I think between the two, I definitely have used the regular um, rose geranium and apricot cleansing oil the most, but there's something special about the Super Seed that really just feels completely different to any other cleansing oil that I've ever used. It feels unfiltered in a way. It sort of is green and that it sort of has this oregano-y herbal kind of scent. It's is wholesome seed oils, really. So between the two, I, I don't know if I could pick because I think they're special in their own way, but I definitely used the rose geranium more and I had it for a little bit longer, so that might be why, but I mean, you might be able to tell that I definitely used way more of the rose geranium, and I love. Demamiol Restorative Cleansing Balm. You know that I didn't love the cleansing dew at first, but I've since fallen in love. I think it's gotten better as time has progressed, but the cleansing balm, the first time I used it, I almost dropped the jar because I was so floored at how beautiful it was, um, and I was 
up till like 1 in the morning last night doing finals and I took a little break at like 11 just to cleanse with this because I knew it would make me feel better. Um, it would soften my skin, it would take away the stress, it would make me feel clean, it would make me feel comforted, nourished. It's a lemongrass dream and I just... I want to live inside of here. It's so, so pretty. Um, another Myron glass jar, the Honey Mud. I've used a good amount. I'm not like almost done, but anytime I see like any, if, if my product moves at all, I'm like, I'm almost done. I got to get more. Um, it's, oh God. It is, ooh, shivers. It is so just stunning. It's probably one of the most unique cleansers that I've ever used as far as texture, as far as how to use it, as far as what it does to the skin. It's one of those cleansers that also functions as a mask, and I really only use it to cleanse. I don't leave it on as like a 20 minute mask, the way some people do, and if you do, more power to you. Um, I love this as a quick like five minute morning mask. I love it just to kind of soak in the evening. Um, I'll do other things. You have to apply it to damp skin in order to get it to really perform the way it's intended to, but it's a raw cacao and honey and fresh dirt dream and it's incredibly soothing decongesting calming clarifying softening it's so perfect it's so well rounded too i think and then one of my favorite hobbies now that i'm in sort of the the apartment that i'm in now i actually have a window in my shower so in the morning i get there's another squirrel hello um I get nice sunlight coming in in the morning so one of my favorite things to do is to put the clean dirt on from may lindstrom put a layer on my face and then I just go sit and like let the sun just like bask in the sun basically and the clove is super calming and comforting and healing and the texture is so unique and it's it just feels like it's comforting your soul but it's also a really effective exfoliant you guys know I'm all for chemical exfoliation AHAs and BHAs for life but this is a truly effective um, kind of cleansing powder or cleansing clay that doesn't feel scrubby, but it definitely feels like it's exfoliating for sure. Um, never irritated me, never dried me out, nothing. It's phenomenal. And actually a little bit of the honey mud and this together as like a cleansing paste, like a microdermabrasion paste. So, so good. Um, Moss Bursaleste. Like, ooh, so pretty. It's it's that Middle Eastern spice, that honey, that neroli, that lemon. Um, I found myself using this a lot when my skin was a little... Needed some TLC, needed some comfort, I needed to de-stress, calm my mind. Um, it also feels like it's exfoliating as well. It sort of coagulates as you smooth it onto the skin. Um, but it emulsifies, so it completely rinses away without a, t a cloth. But, you know, I would never do that. Um, so it cloths off beautifully as well. It's a nice little pot. It's great for travel. Um, and it's... It's, it's really beautiful. It, it really is. It feels luxurious. It feels like you want to use it sparingly and like you want to make a moment out of it because it feels so precious and, and little and cute. And Dealey Brightening Cleanser, I just, it's my favorite cleanser of all time. I just have to talk about it because that's just, it's like programmed into me that I'm like, it's perfect. Everyone needs to know all the time. Uh, let's move on to exfoliants. I'm trying to keep this rapid, but also thorough. I hadn't used Biologie Clichy Lotion P50 1970 until the very beginning of this year, and it was like, I see what everyone's talking about, I get it, I get it, and so obviously it's making it onto the list. When this bottle's finished, I intend to get the jumbo size because it's the kind of thing where I want to use it. I look forward to using it, I look forward to that phenol, formaldehyde kind of smell the numbing effect, the vinegariness of it all, the smoothness that you get, the glow that you get, and how beautiful it is coupled with Vintner's Daughter, which is also on this list, surprise, surprise. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, I think, I don't know if this is the most powerful exfoliant in the world. I don't know if it's the most targeted exfoliant in the world, but the thing I love about it is it makes a visible difference in your skin overnight. It's a, I think it's a joy to use, and it feels just very French. It feels very spa-like and it's um, it definitely gives you results which I think is really great. It's not just like oh it's fun to use and it doesn't do anything. It's fantastic. Paracone MD, the exfoliating pore refiner. I've made a pretty big dent in this considering I haven't had it but really half the year. It's a uh, betaine salicylate so it's a form of BHA that's a lot more mild so it's good for clarifying, decongesting, um, it helps to improve the appearance of large pores but it's quite mild. I find that I can use it multiple times a week without feeling like, what happened to my face? It's all melted off. Um, obviously no Polish Choice BHA, a 2% BHA liquid is like Hall of Fame, um, but it's strong so I can't use it every day and sometimes if I'm dealing with congestion I want something I can use every day. Um, 
I, I very infrequently do an exfoliant every single day, but when I need to, it's I gotta have the right tools to do it, and I think this is fantastic for that. Um, Alcohol-free, still hydrating and softening, but it's definitely exfoliating, that's for sure. Um, Josh Rosebrook Hydrating Accelerator and May Lindstrom The Jasmine Garden. The only thing is with the May, the cap splits, but I don't care, because it's what's inside that matters. Almost done with this, gotta get it back up. Um, and then I had a travel size, which is two ounces, that I completely used up and repurchased the large size. If you don't want to spend the money on this, not this is a gorgeous product in its own right and I'm not comparing them, but this is similar enough in the effect that it gives on the skin and the kind of calming of the mind and the skin, the nourishment, but the boost in hydration. I would say that these could sort of be um, in the same category and that you would be equally happy with both. But with that said, there's something about the Jasmine Garden that it smells like unlike anything I've ever smelled. <sighs> at, at the same time, the Josh Rosebrook has just a little bit more heft to it, so if you deal with a lot of dehydration, you might get along a little bit better with this. But they're both beautiful, and I can't pick between the two, and I'm not going to. Jordan Samuel Skin Hydrate, my favorite hydrating serum to ever, ever exist. And I know that last year I mentioned this. Um, this is what, second, third bottle? I can't, I have no idea, because I use it all the time. I think it's so well-rounded. I think it's a great formula. It's a great price. He's just repackaged it, and it's coming back soon, and it's beautiful, um, and I, I love this to pieces. I think it's it's phenomenal and it's everyone can use this and get a benefit from it uh, And then the dr. Dennis gross clinical concentrate radiance booster I didn't have to tell myself to use it. I just found myself reaching for it all the time um, And you can see I've made obviously a really large dent uh, It is water free. It's a beautiful serum that just sort of gives you glow. It gives you softness. It gives you radiance It's got pyruvic acid Tartaric I believe is also in here. There's um some just lots of plant extracts it's just so well rounded and it mixes beautifully with some vitamin c serums that i sometimes found drying to kind of amp it up but also still give me the glow that i'm looking for so um it's not a vitamin c but it gives you the glow the way a vitamin c does so i love it the creme de la creme even though my labels looks awful because i spilled oil on it months ago um vintner's daughter there's not there are not words there are not words I go to smell this because I'm just like, oh my god, what does that smell like? Because you cannot remember what it smells like until you smell it, because it's so special. And it's so enveloping, and the nice thing about it is it's as high performance as any of the other sort of clinical serums that I've used, but the thing that this does that other, you know, water-based or silicone-based serums can't do is it changes the way you feel. Relaxes the tension, it visibly makes your skin look more energized, more awake, refreshed. Um, it softens the skin, it's a very subtle glow, it feels very purifying uh, at the same time, and it's it feels so wholesome and so delicious, and it's just, there's no words. Oh, I just wanna take my makeup off and put it on right now. Oh, so good. One of the most, the, the products that I've had the shortest amount of time, but captured my love is the youth do from may lindstrom and i put this on last night and right after i did my demamiel cleansing balm and i just uh, i could breathe again my skin just felt more healed it kind of reduced the stress in my skin it helped to kind of clarify soften brighten um and I did an entire post on oil serums that i'll link to below so you can really see what's special about each one but um it's May Lindstrom, so obviously it's beautiful, but it really, in practice, is highly effective. It really just, it changes the way your skin looks almost immediately as far as the vibrancy of it and the softness. And then for nighttime, I say that like I use these during the day all the time, but um, obviously this is reserved for nighttime. It's La Belle Loon um, Organic Skin, and it, um, Annabelle describes it as a an oil, but I personally use it as an oil serum. I mean, I use it as both, but I think as an oil serum, it's extremely special. It's got a lot of rose hips, so it's super strengthening. It's like a lavender dream come true. It's extremely calming, extremely replenishing, extremely firming and um, plumping in a way, um, but not in a way that hyaluronic does, more in the way where it sort of beefs the skin up from the inside out rather than plumps it up. So like a hyaluronic serum spritz and then this, so pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Um, and it's so cute, like I'm just in love with it. <laughs> um, and then Tata Harper Replenishing Nutrient Complex. I have a little bit more left of this and then I have a, a backup. I forgot about this for a little while and then I started using it again and I'm like, why did, why did I stop? 
Why did I stop? The rollerball application I think is great, although I'm not opposed to getting the sort of bigger full size one ounce. Um, it's great for glow, you can use it as a serum or on top of all your other skincare to sort of give it a glow, give it a boost, give it a little antioxidant protection. Um, and it's quite thin, which is I think really nice. It still feels like it's nourishing the skin, but it's very thin, which I think is extremely special. Um, and it's just sort of, yeah, just it feels great on the skin. It, it really makes my skin feel softer, more hydrated. It's really well done. I do love it a lot. And then oil, um, the Jerlique Skin Balancing, which this is not a joke, like it takes a lot for me to use this much of a product because I'm always rotating, trying new things, as is the life of tofcam.com. I don't know. God, it's like sticking your face in a fresh bushel, bushel of roses. Um, but beyond that, I think it's a really enveloping oil. I think it's mainly better if you've got dry skin because it is slightly coconut oil based and it does feel like it's kind of syrupy in a good way. Um, but it just, it feels like it's really well made, it's got a lot of good ingredients, it's a nice blend, it's affordable considering the quality and considering the size of the bottle, which I think is, can only be a good thing, you know what I mean? Sunday Riley title. This made the list because I helped launch this into Sephora, um, in New York at least. Um, I fell in love with it, I got to sort of play with the different iterations of it before it actually got packaged like this, and um, I think it's a great formula. There's, It's a very polar product, some people despise it and some people just are head over heels. You can group me in with those head over heels people because I find it really hydrating on my skin and I've got quite dehydrated skin. I find it layers beautifully over an oil. I feel like it's got a lot of good treatment in it. It's completely oil free. There are jojoba esters, so keep that in mind if you're really prone to breaking out. But it's silicone free. Um, it smells so good. It just reminds me of like springtime when this was launched. I, lo I love it, I really do, and I found, I found it to be um, great, and I kept wanting to use it over and over again. Great during the day, great during the night. And then I started using this, and truly, like, was a little bit surprised, to be honest, because it's not really a sort of a brand that I was like, oh, I have to try their stuff, otherwise my head will explode. So I was pleasantly surprised that I fell in love with it so much. The Tula Hydrating Day and Night Cream. It's got probiotic technology, um, which means it has sort of... Um, fermented ingredients. It's got good bacteria, but it also has antioxidants from plant extracts. It's got um, a very beautiful buttery, creamy, whipped texture in a way. The thing that's special about this is it immediately changes the way your skin feels. Like it immediately feels not just like you put moisturizer on, but it feels softer. Um, it's almost like a yogurty consistency. Uh, great during the day, great during the night, great during the winter if you want to really kind of comfort this skin, but it still feels light enough that you could use it during the summer, maybe in the evenings more so, but um, I love the smell and I just, I can feel it on my hand right now, my skin visibly and actually feels different, like it actually feels softer, um, and it's a good price point, which I think is great. Um, Tata Harper Reparative Moisturizer. I think it's one of my favorite moisturizers ever. It's completely silicone free. It says it's a rich moisturizer for dry skin, but I'm like, mm, it's kind of not. It's, I find it to be quite thin and great for layering over an oil, but at the same time, it does feel like it's nourishing, which I think is great. Um, it's an investment. It's definitely one of the most expensive moisturizers I've ever purchased, and typically I'm not a, let's spend a lot of money on a moisturizer, but there's something special about this, and if, if there wasn't, I wouldn't mention it. You know what I mean? Um, May Lindstrom, The Blue Cocoon, my favorite product to ever exist, ever, and I know I mentioned this last year, I mention it every single video, um, and I'm still using my same pot from last year, which I don't know if you're supposed to, it says 12 months, so... I should probably finish it, but considering how often I use this, and we're talking like every single day, look at how much I've, I'm only halfway through. Um, it's just saved my life. Saved my life. Love it. Eye cream of the year. This is a big feat because I, um, you're on candid camera. Hi. It's, I'm like literally filming myself. Would you like to be in my video? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Okay, be right back. Bye. Bye. Hydro Boost Eye from M61, which is Blue Mercury's brand. Eye creams are a tricky thing for me because there's it takes a lot to really impress me. My favorite 
ever still is the Chanel Lift, but there was something really special about this in that it made my eyes look brighter, it made them look um, more awake, it softened, it hydrated, it plumped, it was great under makeup, it's fragrance free, it's in a pump, it just checked all the boxes and, um, and I use it all the time and I'm a fan. Two masks, the problem solver. Ooh. And obviously the bowl has to be mentioned because it's perfect. Um, the Problem Solver by May Landstrom and the Honey Potion from Pharmacy. I used these all the time. This one came out during the summer. I got this one sort of earlier in the year. Um, they're both phenomenal. They're both quite active in the sense that they really, you can sort of feel them kind of doing their, their thing on the skin. This one is nourishing but clarifying um, and comforting and hydrating. And then this one is like, your skin is giving you when it's like pouting in the corner and you need to like get in there with a little, not that I condone violence, but if you need to like whip your skin into shape, this is definitely the thing to do it with. Um, and it's just so spa-like to use, it's perfect. Um, makeup, Tarte Shape Tape. It's as good as everyone says that it is. It covers, I've been using it almost every single day since I got it in September. I love it. Um, I have light medium, but I haven't matched myself with any of the new shades, but light medium works almost perfectly for me, so I don't question it. It covers without even trying. Foundation of the year, Maestro Glow from Armani. I just kept reaching for this over and over and over again, and I still do. I think it's great if you want glow. I think it's great if you want to just look like your skin is just absorbing all the light in the world and, and just making you look radiant without being shimmery at all. Um, I'm picky about my foundations, and when they say glowy, I'm like, all right, but is it shimmer? This isn't, and I love it. Um, and then, Hylamide Photography Foundation. Uh, Surprisingly, I didn't think much of this to begin with, but as I started using it, I just realized that it does something none of my other products have done, and that it just softens the skin. It doesn't cover anything, but it just makes your skin look better. It's very hard to explain. It looks great in photographs. It looks great in real life. It's glowy, but still soft. It's satiny, and it's velvety, and it's smooth, and it's kind of um, creates uniformity. It's really well done. I love it. Um, fragrance of the year is Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. Um, when I wasn't surprised because I've loved everything else that she's done, but this is, oh, it's just on me now. It's, like I said, it's, it's hot cinnamon candy. It's a fireplace. It's a poured glass of aged bourbon. Um, it's fuzzy socks paired with like a tight velvet black dress. That's what it is. It can, it can take you from comfy at home to like out in the evening. Definitely a fall and winter scent, I have to say. I can't imagine really wearing this like during the summer in the daytime. It just feels too warm, but um, it's, it's beautiful and look at it. It's just, oof, she's not playing games. Okay, I mean, that was all three million products that we had to get through, really. I um, Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you saw some products that either piqued your interest or that you love as well. Um, if you've got any, like, products that you just cannot imagine the year without, leave them below, because I want to know, because I'm always looking for new things. Um, and thank you guys for a great year, really, from, like, from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to me that you've supported me and that I'm still sitting here with my camera stacked on top of my humidifier box. Um, with a desk lamp with a piece of tissue taped over it as a softbox light that you guys care enough to sort of sit down and watch the videos that I upload once every eight years. Um, it's been a very um, tumultuous year to say the least. A lot has happened. I feel like I've changed as a person and for the better I feel like I'm more confident now. I'm not scared to sort of just do what I want to do and um, even if I've gotten a little curvier I still feel like I'm owning it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I felt like I really started to learn who I was. And um, I made some great friends. I sort of strengthened some friendships that I had and um, really sort of just formed a small but close group of friends that means the world to me. And um, yeah, I, I really look forward to next year. Next year is going to be like, we're going to go for it. We're going to do it. And we're going to do it together. I hope your year was was more than fantastic. And if it wasn't, I hope that, you know, you got some experiences out of it that you can grow from um, because we never should stop growing or learning or seeking knowledge. Um, I hope that you have a great rest of your year and that you have a great New Year's if you celebrate New Year's on January 1st. Um, and I'll talk to you guys really soon. Bye.